77. Write the Lewis structures of the reactants and product of each of the following equations and identify the Lewis acid and the Lewis base in each. Okay, so writing the Lewis structures is going to be a review. There was a whole chapter in this textbook just designated towards how to write Lewis structures. So you can always check back to that chapter. I believe it's chapter seven, um, but we have a playlist. If you go back to the channel, you can search for that playlist. Um, so that's going to be a review. The only thing that's new here is just looking at those Lewis structures and identifying which one is the Lewis acid or the base. I just wrote down here as a guideline the number of valence electrons that each element uh, has in this reaction. And let's go for it. So F minus, we have fluorine. And fluorine has seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But the negative means that you gained one electron. And this electron looks very lonely. It needs a pair. So there's the eighth one. And since that fluorine gained one electron, it's more negative than positive. So that's the one that has the negative. OK, now let's add the SO3. Least electronegative in the middle. Sulfur is less, you know, lesser or at least electronegative than oxygen. So sulfur is in the middle, surrounded by three oxygens. One, two, and three. Doesn't matter if you put it up top. I'm just going to put it on the bottom. Each, all of these, all four of these elements have six valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six for the oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then for the sulfur, say so one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's bind them up, single bond first, just to see if we have the octet rule. So single bonds for every one of them. And it seems that for all the oxygens, you need to have a double bond to get that eight. So double it up, double it up, and double it up. Okay, maybe this is kind of, this one's kind of a little, there we go, okay. Now, let's see what the product is. Well, it's written a little bit weird here, but remember, the least electronegative is in the middle. Fluorine is like the most electronegative element. So even though it's written as in the middle here, don't let that trick you. Sulfur is still in the middle. So it seems like sulfur is in the middle, surrounded by those three oxygens, and then we just added the fluorine. So I'm just going to copy this over. And now I'm just going to add the fluorine on the top. So I have fluorine coming in. And fluorine has those seven valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep in mind that the negative means that we also gained one electron. Always add that one electron to the most ele electronegative element. So I'm just going to add it here. So now pause for a second and say to yourself, wait a minute, this is the same as this, and this is the same as this. Well, yeah, that's how Lewis acids and Lewis bases work. The base will come and try to, you know, donate its electron pairs to the acid to make the bond. Now, the most closest, the closest electrons that's going to work is these in the picture, right? Which maybe I'll highlight it as these. Well, what's going to happen? is these electrons say, I know you don't have one lone electron to bind sulfur. That's okay, I like to share. I'm gonna share my two electrons so that we can have a bond. So what's gonna happen is these two electrons are gonna come in and boop, make a bond with the sulfur. So when that happens, no two lone pairs anymore, you know, no two lone electrons, one bond. But now sulfur is like, wait a minute, I know I can have the expanded octet. That's why this compound was stable, because it had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons. But that's the max for sulfur. Sulfur cannot have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons. So one of these double bonds got to go. It does not matter which one. Maybe I will just draw this one that's got to go. So what's going to happen? is one of the bonds is going to leave and those two electrons, because remember, they're electrons, they go back in terms of a lone pair. So what's going to happen is bond no more. These lone electrons are now going to act as a pair. 
and they're now going to go solely to the oxygen. And if you notice that the sulfur now has the, the expanded octet again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And all the elements on the outside all have the octet. Just know that who has the negative charge, if we did the uh, formal charge for all of them, turns out that this oxygen will now have that negative charge. But that's it. Now we just have to say, because of what we just discussed, which one is the base and which one is the acid? The one that kickstarts everything, that kickstarts the chain reaction, the one that donates the pair, that's the base. So the F minus has to be the Lewis base. And this is the Lewis acid. Just know that the Lewis base and the Lewis acid are not on the product. So from here, you could just say, okay, this one is a negative. Negatives are generally the base. And it worked out for this one. Okay, that's it. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, and I hope you all are having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.